Thank you for joining us here at Samiha Gardens. This property is located in Canby and is in close proximity to the Gulf City Mall, two golf courses and some of the island's finest beaches. We have an exciting show for you this week. I'm Davia Chambers and Let's Talk Tobago starts now. THA to honor Calypso Rose. Details of the launch of the Inez Gate housing project and later we take you to the closing ceremony for the YES program. These stories and more when Let's Talk Tobago continues. Join the Office of the Chief Secretary as we celebrate 54 years of independence on August 31st. The Tobago Independence Day Parade starts at 8 a.m. at Bacolet Grounds next to the Dwight York Stadium and will travel along Claude Noel Highway to the Gardenside Car Park. Cannons will be fired during the National Anthem. The Independence Day Fireworks display will set off from 8 p.m. at Fort King George. No vehicles will be allowed in the area. Come celebrate Independence Day with us. I was introduced to the marine environment by my biology teacher when I was 14 years old and I decided to make it my passion. So I've been diving for almost 32 years. I decided, listen, this is the job for me. I also find great joy in introducing the kids uh, to that environment because that's our future. I am Alvin Douglas. I'm a dive shop operator at the Storbay Beach Facility and tourism is all we take. Samiha Gardens boasts four private villas and 12 two-bedroom apartments. Each home is fully air-conditioned and the kitchen is fully equipped to satisfy your foodie needs. Our lead story this week has details on how the Queen of Calypso is being honored for her achievements internationally and right here in Tobago. Here's Omadara Mills to share the good news. I work in as a domestic, quite in Prince's tongue, but in Madame Shiham is sick. The way how she's getting on. As you reach in the morning, holding the name calling. She too miserable. Anything she want me to do. No, madam. It's a song you'll hear on Calypso Rose's latest album entitled Far From Home, a compilation that's already sold over 60,000 copies in France and will be released in this country in November. At age 76, this Bethel-born Calypsonian is showing no signs of slowing down. In addition to promoting her album, she's traveling around France, teaching children about Calypso, and is set to perform at several concerts around the world. To honor Calypso Rose for her life's achievements and current pursuits, the Tobago House of Assembly plans to establish an award in her name. We have made a decision to to set up the Calypso Rose Award, uh, an annual award to a deserving cultural artist. Uh, we'll be giving her some of money uh, in order to further his or her personal or professional development. So that funding can be used for education, for um, helping them to produce or whatever. The award will be presented during Tobago Day celebrations in December. In 1977, Calypso Rose became the first woman to win the road march competition with her song, Tempo. A year later, she won the Calypso King competition which then had to be renamed the Calypso Monarch competition. Besides the award, Calypso Rose, who holds an honorary doctorate from the University of the West Indies, wants Calypso to be taught in schools so that future generations can appreciate the country's musical art form. Bring the artists, put them in the schools and let them teach the kids our culture, because our culture is very important in Trinidad and Tobago. Just the last year, Calypso Rose donated a sculpture of herself to the Tobago Heritage Museum. 
She hopes to donate a considerable collection of awards and memorabilia to Tobago to ensure her legacy is remembered for years to come. I'm Omadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. What inspired the construction of this property? Well, the owner found there was a need for apartments like these for visitors and their families. Now, the Tobago House of Assembly continues to foster collaboration with residents of the island with the Face-to-Face -face Community Series. Karen DeFreitas takes us to the Swamp Community for this week's meeting. Here are the details. Infrastructure and housing are two of the main issues for residents of the Black Rock Wim Spring Garden Electoral District. They shared their concerns with Tobago House of Assembly officials during the recent face-to-face -face community meeting at Wim Community Center. One resident complained about the condition of Philadelphia Branch Road and found out it's already on the list of upcoming projects. When it rains, you can swim in, swim on it. When it dry, dust for so. Numerous complaints, nothing has been done. But it is something that we have um, earmarked for the 2017 fiscal year. I know, the, I know the engineers, when they have done the assessments, maybe about a, a little over a year ago, there were a couple of challenges that they had to work out. I think that those have been resolved. I figure that we should be able to get, by the end of the next dry season, that your road should be at the standard of the other roads in the community. So I Some members of the district also said there isn't enough public housing in their area. In every expansion, every whether it's houses or, or lots, there is a statutory provision for surrounding villages. The problem, of course, is that when you take 15% of 50, you know, you end up with 7 or 8. And when you distribute 7 or 8 among 100 aspirants, it doesn't look as if anything has happened. The residents are also being advised that collaboration is the key to ensure their community continues to be developed. In order for us to develop the, the area, we really need to collaborate and also work together with our stakeholders. Now, this is really giving you a sense of the kind of green culture that we are developing within this area that we encourage our groups, we encourage our people. And as you see, in, in terms of the, the kind of areas in the electoral district. In all, 13 community areas. meetings were held in the island's 12 electoral districts between February and August. I'm Marlon Gutzleben for Let's Talk to Bigu. The property has 24-hour security. And if you want some proof, you should also know that the property has been incident-free for 10 years. Now, independent celebrations are days away, which means preparations have already begun. Our next story has details on how youth military groups prepare themselves for the big day. Have a look at this. I thank thee. It's just one of the 12 songs these children are practicing as they prepare for this year's Independence Parade. The band, spearheaded by the Defense Force, consists of members from Tobago's Boys Brigade, the Cadet Force, Pathfinders, and Trinidad's Petrotrin Cadets. This is an opportunity to make their individual contribution to the independence of Trinidad and Tobago. So I always try to put that in their heads and, you know, enforce that it's not just about staying out of trouble and thing, but it's be just being patriotic and, you know, enjoying music because music is an international language, you know, and regardless of where you do or what you do, it's something that keeps you together and happy. The band comprises almost 70 young people ages 9 to 16, and a few adults. Some of the members explain why they got involved in the Independence Parade. 
I like playing t- because I want to be on the independence party and I want to make my family happy. I am glad about what I'm doing so I can make Trimbeganians feel proud about the youth. It's also an experience that can help strengthen military career choices for the participating youngsters. I've seen members from here graduate into the army, into the police, into the fire ban. Uh, the drum major of the police band at present is a member, uh, was a former member of the cadet force. So, you know, you see people making it a career over the years. The initiative is supported by the Tobago House of Assemblies, Office of the Chief Secretary. Independence Day is celebrated on August 31st to commemorate Trinidad and Tobago's independence from Great Britain, which the nation won in 1962. The Tobago Parade will begin at the Dwight York Stadium and proceed along the Claude Noel Highway into Scarborough. I'm Omodara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Up next, highlights on an upcoming housing project. Let's Talk Tobago will be right back. Stay with us. Hello again, I'm Davia Chambers here at Samiha Gardens. Did you know that this was the first gated community in Tobago? It was established in 2009. Listen up, a new housing project is coming to Tobago. I'm sure after you have a look at this story, you'll want to live there. Here are the details. A new housing development is coming to Tobago on Chauvin Road. Construction of 46 townhouses at Inez Gates is scheduled to be soon undertaken by Inez Investments Limited. Tobago House of Assembly has, for a long while, placed housing and home ownership at various price points at the heart of its development trust. Fairly recently, communities have been formed in various parts of Tobago. The Assembly, however, cannot be expected to satisfy the demand at all the various levels. And that's exactly why the Tobago House of Assembly is endorsing this housing project. Inez Gates complements the Assembly's housing targets. This is exactly what we need here in Tobago. The overwhelming demand for housing in Tobago is by no means a major concern for all Tobagoans. We in the Tobago House of Assembly need more private developers to recognize and appreciate the need and the demand and, as a consequence, get involved. Inez Gates will also include a communal swimming pool, a children's playground and beautifully landscaped grounds where residents can exercise. The project's director is Mr. Alan Warner. I want to especially congratulate Mr. Alan Warner not only because of his success in ventures to date, but I want to congratulate him for his mindset. Because Alan Warner, I suppose he has imbued the other members of the team with this. He's an individual who has always demonstrated two fundamental characteristics that are necessary for someone who is to develop in the interest of the people. And that is a combination of sensitivity and capacity. Inez Gates will be completed in 24 months. I'm Caroline Wallace for Let's Talk Tobago. Jeffrey Azar is the owner of this property. He named it in honor of his mother, Samiha Azar. 
The property is walking distance to the Penny Savers supermarket and the Gulf City Mall in Lowlands, just to name a few. Now, would you believe me if I told you that you can create cartoon characters like the ones you look at on television? Well, thanks to the animation workshop hosted by this organization, you can. Here's Carol Ann Wallace to fill you in on the details. Whether you want to create mobile applications, games, or cartoons, you can do so right here in Tobago, as the island intensifies its approach to diversify the economy by expanding the opportunities available in various sectors. The Eco Industrial Development Company of Tobago, or EIDCOT, has launched its animation workshop for all interested persons. The program was facilitated by Animation and Digital Media Festival, Anime Carib. We want the youth to know that it is possible to have a career in animation in Trinidad and Tobago because I think that a lot of people in Trinidad and Tobago don't know that we can do animation here. So there's no program right now in Tobago like that teaches animation. So this phase is to sensitize the public about 2D and 3D animation and I think it, we want to have a more long-term program in the future, maybe a six-month program. After the raw talent is identified, the participants will begin a full course to learn the basics of animation, 2D and 3D motion and other skills. There is a fledgling IC, um, animation industry in Trinidad and we're seeking to build off of that. Bearing in mind that what they have achieved in Trinidad has taken about 15 years Right, we're trying to fast track it in Tobago. Right, and that whole process starts with a search that is done throughout Tobago. So that is ongoing now. So we've been there like Speyside, Roxborough, uh, Mason Hall. But the learning doesn't end there. Specialized training will also be carried out at the Tobago Information Technology Limited. We're expecting a class size of about 30. Right, after that is completed, we're hoping that we could get at least 15 to 20 of those certified. And after those are certified, then we get them into the specialized training. All of it are at no cost to the individuals. The course will run for approximately 18 months. I am Carolyn Wallace for Let's Talk Tobago. This property is secluded and favored for its peaceful atmosphere, an oasis for relaxation, but with all the conveniences right nearby. Now we focus on a two-day seminar for personal development of young people hosted by the Division of Education, Youth Affairs and Sport. Crystal George has this story. Capacity building is a means of boosting organizational capacity through the development of its human resources. A two-day seminar was hosted for just that reason, to help young people increase their knowledge, gain clarity on their roles as youth workers, and help them to better understand themselves and the environment around them. Instead of focusing on the ills or the negatives that affect our young people, we need to find a way or create a way in which our young, we can preserve our young persons. We need to look at the positive. We need to look at the environment that our young persons are involved in and use that to highlight and to protect our young persons. One of the participants, Chrisona Andrew, says the seminar has expanded her view on the issues that affect teenagers and the approaches needed to solve in them. I have learned about, you know, the way teenagers think. You know, some adults, they criticize and, you know, bully teenagers because they aren't as mature as they think they should be. But I've learned that, you know, teenagers mature a little bit differently than adults and they, they, the risk-taking part of their brain is what matures first instead of the rationalizing part. And I think for that we have to just embrace it and allow them certain privilege when it comes to the risk-taking. Some of the other participants says they're taking away valuable lessons about youth and their development. This process has been quite informative. Um, we've learned this morning about positive youth development, which is really a strength-based strength -based approach to youth development as opposed to a deficit-based um, approach. So far in the seminar I've learned that um, not supposed to look, just look at young people as to what they are doing, as if it's right or wrong, but to actually look at the aspect that could affect what's going on in life. Another capacity building seminar will be carried out in early 2017. I'm Crystal George for Let's Talk Tobago. Coming up, we take you to the YES program's closing ceremony. Let's Talk Tobago will be right back. Don't go anywhere.
Join the Office of the Chief Secretary as we celebrate 54 years of independence on August 31st. The Tobago Independence Day Parade starts at 8 a.m. at Bacolet Grounds next to the Dwight York Stadium and will travel along Claude Noel Highway to the Gardenside Car Park. Cannons will be fired during the National Anthem. The Independence Day fireworks display will set off from 8 p.m. at Fort King George. No vehicles will be allowed in the area. Come celebrate Independence Day with us. My name is Cloy Williams. I'm a maxi taxi operator for over 25 years and I'm involved in tourism. It's a beautiful industry and tourism helps me financially. It helps me my family, it takes care of my church, it takes me all over the world and it's helped me meet people. And let me tell you something, at the end of it, tourism is all that we take. Welcome back. You're watching Let's Talk Tobago. Now, if you're looking for a place that offers a combination of long and short term rentals, Samiha Gardens is the place. Now, it's always sad to say goodbye. The curtains came down on the Youth Energized for Success summer program, and these interns were offered one last bit of advice before they returned to their normal routines. Let's take a look. It's said that a mind stretched by new experiences can never return to its old dimensions. And the Youth Energized for Success summer program aims to do just that by helping its interns gain work experience and life skills as they prepare to enter the world of work. Yes, has developed a targeted approach in, in assisting us in bridging the gap with respect to youth unemployment through the creation of policies and strategies all aimed at enabling young adults to either create jobs, but also to be prepared for the world of work and to strengthen their skills and training, thereby enhancing their marketability. The young participants didn't only gain work experience, they also learned that having a vision is a very critical part of their future success. So here's a few things I want to tell you. If you're gonna exceed your vision, Make sure that you have the right vision to start with. Hello? You must have a vision that sees more than you. And do not lock yourself into a vision that only sees the past mistakes. Don't lock yourself into a vision that sees only your past failures. If your vision only seen your past failures, then your vision is not the right vision. The interns were encouraged to accept responsibility for their personal development and adhere to the rules and regulations of the workplace. You're doing this because it is the right thing to do. You're doing right because right must be done. You serve in and going to work and being there on time, even though the people who tell you to be there on time, not on time. Exceed your vision. Don't get caught up in this myopic thing, in that narrowness, and begin to feel that you because of them, I doing this, I ain't doing none of that. I see me, I done with them. I ain't, don't, don't get caught up in that. The YES program summer internship ran from July 11th to August 19th at the Victor E. Bruce Financial Complex in Scarborough. I'm Kuhn DeFritas for Let's Talk Tobago. This is the communal pool and is the largest of the three in Samiha Gardens. The other two pools are exclusively for the villas. Now we switch gears to divert your attention to our next story. International Youth Day was recently celebrated in Tobago and we have highlights on how Tobago celebrated this day. Have a look. Highlighting positive youth organizations and young people. That's how the Department of Youth Affairs celebrated International Youth Day 2016. And that's not all. 
patrons were also treated to a live concert from young artists. If you believe in love, sing Cause you got me sorry and I am floating away But sent from heaven, I thank God for you, baby You drive me crazy, what we have is amazing I can't explain it, say This is crazy, la 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 la, that insanity I'm in a danger zone, I'm giving everything Love's in the air, I breathe in with no fear I'm falling for you for iTunes, CDs, and MP3s, where disc jockeys came to parties on time. With their big box crates, tune after tune, whole night straight. Now only a handful of DJs you can truly appreciate. The majority behave like divas, I'm sure you can relate. Talking over entire songs, complimented by the plates. Take me back to a time when you came out your house to go to the outhouse. The theme for International Youth Day 2016 is The Road to 2030, Eradicating Poverty and Achieving Sustainable Consumption and Production. I am Caroline Wallace for Let's Talk Tobago. So I have a question for you. How can young athlete development be improved? While you think about it, let's take a look at who had their say this week. Firstly, they have to be focused, they have to be committed in what they are doing, and secondly, we have to put things in place for them. Athletes can develop by a healthy lifestyle or and better training. I think if there are more facilities for them to train, perhaps um, support from families and friends that may assist. Realistically, for young athletes to develop in Tobago would be a bit difficult as it is, but um, moving forward, Facilities um, like the Dwight York Stadium have to be put into use with proper trainers, people who have experience in the field and um, obviously giving the athletes some form of exposure. Better coaches and better training facilities. Like most other countries, they are, they are, the athletes are, be, are, are doing training as a job. They are giving us type to train on a daily basis. So when time comes for them to compete in these international Olympics, they are already ready in mind and state. In Trinidad and Tobago, we have the opposite. If we have the sporting facility or the stadium and thing, and then we have the right people to train them, I believe they can develop from, from that. Young athletes need to be more focused, focused on the trade at hand. And of course, with the added help from the powers that be, uh, our athletes will definitely improve. We close another edition of Let's Talk Tobago and as always, we thank you for watching. Please email us with your comments or queries about the program and be sure to visit our website, like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. From our house to yours, I'm Davia Chambers along with the Department of Information, Office of the Chief Secretary, Tobago House of Assembly, wishing you a safe and very productive week. We close now with a montage of Carib Great Race 2016. We do hope you enjoy. Thank you.